You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R.com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market from unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block with your host, Mark Longo, from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts, Uncle Mike Tussaw from St. Charles Wealth Management, Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionPit.com, Andrew the Rock Lobster, Joe Benazzi from from OptionFit.com and Henry the Flowmaster Schwartz from SIBO. The Option Block is brought to you by SIBO. SIBO's suite of S&P 500 index options, SPX and mini S&P 500 XSP options, allows traders to speculate on the direction of the market, generate income, and hedge for downside protection of their portfolio of stocks. No matter what kind of trader you are, there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market. Visit www.cbo.com slash SPX today to learn more. The views expressed herein are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of CBOE Global Markets Incorporated or any of its subsidiaries, collectively CBOE. The information provided is for general education and information purposes only. There are important risks associated with transacting in any of the CBOE products or any of the digital assets discussed here. Before engaging in any transactions in those products or digital assets, it is important for market participants to carefully review the disclosures and disclaimers contained at www.cboe.com slash us underscore disclaimers these products and digital assets are complex and are suitable only for sophisticated market participants these products involve the risk of loss which can be substantial and depending on the type of product can exceed the amount of money deposited in establishing the position market participants should put at risk only funds they can afford to lose without affecting their lifestyle and now get ready to hit the auction block All right, everybody. That music means we are back. It is Thursday. It is noon central. It is 1 p.m. Eastern. Do you know what's going on in these crazy, crazy markets we're all living through together? Well, let's find out, shall we? It's time for the option block with the cool kids call the old OB. My name, of course, Mark Longo from the T-H-E, optionsinsider.com, as well as from the network upon which so many of you folks are binging these days just a reminder that if you like what you hear this show anything else out there on the network throw a like a star a comment all that stuff in aggregate no matter what platform you're getting it on no matter what they let you do all of that in aggregate it does help us really keep drawing new people man there's new people look at just what happened in the last 24 hours people are frantically typing options and volatility and all sorts of things and probably a little nvda into their search bars on their platform of choice and luckily we're there for them so keep that trend going like a star comment does help that go a long way and of course if you want to go above and beyond you want to join us let's say for options oddities tomorrow after ball views you wanted to join us Yesterday, maybe you want to go check out the 300-plus awesome pro Q&As and oddities that are already waiting for you there, as well as that awesome panel I did with the Flowmaster and everything else, all these cool goodies and nuggets that only make their way to the pro. The optionsinsider.com slash pro is the place to go to learn more. As we go around the horn, see who's joining us today. I am actually happy that we are able to put a show together today. There was a big uh, internet outage here in Chicago today. Looks like that might still be wreaking havoc with the uncleist of Mike. So we'll see if we can get him on 
a little bit later on in the show. But luckily, I'm able to hold down the fort, and I'm also joined all the way out there in the land of Sibo East. I did just see him right before the show, so I can confirm proof of life, even though he is busy getting his quotes of Solana. He is the Flowmaster himself, uh, Mr. Henry Schwartz from the aforementioned Sibo East. Mr. Flowmaster, how go things in the land of the East, sir? Uh, everything is good in New York. Uh, busy, busy market days. I actually just put some slides together. I'm always putting slides together. So the deck I'm presenting tonight at a dinner uh, was just a kind of a quick update, uh, like kind of a state of the industry, but but actually for, for people that are more focused on equity trading. And I just ran kind of what volume's looking like year to date. And February, we're running about 49.2 million contracts a day. Uh, oh, wow. All time records all over the place. Looks like today's going to be about 53, maybe even 54 million contracts. So uh, things, and and, the, and the, I think the healthiest part of that is we got growth in everything index, ETF, and single stock is back. So single stock ADV is around 26.1 million contracts uh, this month daily. That's the same as 2021, which was Memorama year. Hmm. Yes, yes, a lot to unpack, and that tinny voice humming along can mean but one thing. We are joined. No internet outage down there in the southern volatility mecca known as Austin, where we are joined once again by the greasiest of meatballs, Mr. Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com. Mr. Meatball, welcome back to the show to you as well, sir. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Um, I just wish we had something to talk about. Yeah, you know, kind of a boring <laughs> day. Maybe we should just call it now. Instead, I guess we'll keep on rolling right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. All right, everybody, let's do it. Let us commence operations on this mad, mad day. But what's going on out there today? I don't know. It's kind of hard to find anything to talk about. Yeah, of course. Dominating the headlines, dominating the market today. You know, it's an NVIDIA world. We're all just living in it right now. And that is reflected in what we're seeing out there in the markets. I talk about this with a lot of people during our various shows throughout the week. I keep coming back to this point. We actually put it out to you folks for a question of the week as well. But just I, I'm hard pressed to think. I've been doing this for a while now. I've been hard pressed to think of another earnings where almost the entirety of the market, whether you trade it or not, everyone was laser focused on this one announcement. Maybe you could go back to the heyday of Apple a little over a decade ago when they were kind of ruling the roost. Maybe, maybe then, but uh, even then, I, I don't think everyone was laser focused on NVIDIA the way they were last night. You have Goldman coming out saying the most, the most important company on the planet. Uh, <laughs> we asked you guys last night, we were talking about this again during Options Boot Camp yesterday. So we put out a fun flash poll, get to our actual poll, which is still ongoing a little bit later. But we put out a fun flash poll just during Options Boot Camp yesterday because uh, Dan put it out. He thinks this is bigger than the Fed. So we said, do you agree? Do you think NVIDIA earnings are bigger than the next Fed announcement, at least in terms of their market impact? And 70% of you said yes, only 30% saying no. So, yeah, this, we're in rarefied air, listeners, when the earnings from one single company just kind of eclipsing everything else out there. And, of course, everyone said they can't possibly make it. They can't possibly make it. And looks like they did, and uh, the rest of the market is just celebrating, which is funny because so much of the market has nothing to do with AI. <laughs> what does Levi's care about AI or, you know, Portillo's? You buy in more burgers because of AI, but nonetheless, the market on the rampage today, S&P up 1.8%, 90 handles. We swung pretty much 100 handles off this news, listeners. We were selling off earlier this week just on the concern about NVIDIA. Now, apparently, all is right with the world. NVIDIA has righted the ship. Uh, NASDAQ, my goodness, up two and two-thirds percent. Dow up about 0.85 percent. And let us not forget our friends, uh, the small caps, up about a third of a percent, still back below the uh, 2,000 level after just, of course, they might, they might be breaking through it at any moment. Did they break through it earlier today? Oh, they bounced right off of it. But uh, yeah, the sell-off earlier this week kind of caught up small caps they're trying to recover now. We'll see how much they can recover. But a lot of madness popping off. Of course, uh, NVIDIA, kind of like the market's earnings announcement. <laughs> so once that happened, Vol, of course, coming back in from the lofty, a little bit right around 16 handle we were hanging out at going into the announcement at about a 1420 when we kicked off the show now down about two tenths of a point. Again, we were off on Monday, so we're going all the way back 
to the last Thursday show. So you might say net, not a lot has happened on the ball front, but hey, we did a lot of living in between and got a lot lower, got much higher, and now we're hanging out almost unched, which is kind of funny. VIX giving up the go 78 down six points from where it was last Thursday. Uh, VXX 1410 down about half a point. UVXY 710 also down half a point. SVIX, you know it's ticking up 3960 up 1.1 points. And our old friend UVIX 1080 when we kicked off the show down nearly a full point. I threw some little crappy vestigial UVIX puts in my back pocket going into NVIDIA. And those are those are looking juicy right now. We'll get into all that fun on options oddities tomorrow, what I end up doing with all that fun. But a lot to unpack. Let's go around the horn the way we started. Let's go out to SIBO East. Mr. Flowmaster, sir, I'm not sure if you're aware of this company. Uh, NVIDA, I think it's called, something like that. But it seems to be taking up all the oxygen in the room, sir. Have you heard of it? I, I have heard of it, and um, sadly, I'm not involved. But I did, I, and but we were looking at, at, you know, obviously this has been a hot, hot, hot name, and we were doing some analytics on uh, implied earnings gap last night using some of the SIBO data, and um, it was we were pricing in, I think, about a sixty handle move, so it's about a, it's, a, it's up about a hundred points. Um, so it's a heck of a move. One thing I did actually just notice the biggest open interest change following yesterday's flow, because yesterday's volume actually was a little light heading into earnings, uh, considering what the, what the average daily volume on this thing is, which is, um, somewhat insane. And I think pushing around 700,000, no, sorry, 1.42 million contracts is average. Yesterday was a little light, but the biggest open interest change was 36,000 of the, the Feb 23rd. 1300 calls. So those are, those expire tomorrow. 1300 line, which I am assuming is a risk control trade. <laughs> I'm assuming, <laughs> but you never know. You never, you get the tap on the shoulder from the risk manager and he says, how about those 1300s? You got to just look at them and be like, really? Can we go a little, I know we talked about garbage calls before, but that's kind of stretching the definition of garbage calls, sir. Yeah. And there's still, there's still no bit of a penny today. So I guess, um, I don't know. I mean, if, if somebody needed to buy those, I assume it was a buyer, then um, it actually kind of shows you that somebody was short something else. So this might actually be burning more people than um, than you would think. But it, it's an impressive move. That's, that's for sure. There's a lot of action. But, you know, but overall, I mean, you know, like I said, 50, 53 million contract day, uh, awesome volume, and um, we're hitting on all cylinders. I need to dig into some more of those uh, those thirteen hundred. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> that is the top open position in Nvidia right now. Fifty two thousand of these things expiring tomorrow, listeners. Of the Feb <laughs> thirteen hundred. That also that might get one of my uh, just winner winner chicken dinner of the year. Fifty six thousand of them trading yesterday. Listen, my goodness. According to this, Mr. Flowmaster, they actually traded 25 cents. Holy crap. Huh. Yeah, I see that. 501. Yeah, they did. They did. did for 25 cents. <laughs> yep. It was. Oh, my goodness. Cuckoo bananas. And I mean, I don't know who was jumping on board those, but, you know, sold to you. Yeah, that's a buy right you could do all day and feel pretty good about it. Uh, you get up to 1300 I think some people would let some, a little bit of stock go at 1300 I'm just guessing, just guessing. But my goodness, Mr. Meatball, same question for you, sir. It's NVIDIA's world. We're all just living in it now. It, it's just kind of crazy town. But we're there. We might as well embrace the crazy. Uh, what was catching your eye out there in NVIDIA last night? And of course, leading into that as well it got kind of got overshadowed and all the madness but we had a huge rally into the close yesterday uh, so i know like 50 handles in the s p so i know you're slinging some zero day so maybe after your that comments was, if you want to do a little zero day minute there have at it yeah that was pretty bananas um you know i i kind of track market standard you know interday standard deviation and over the course of an hour we went from down three standard deviations to up three standard deviations in turn, uh, away from volume weighted average price. One of the nuttier moves I've seen, uh, something had to have leaked. That's the only explanation for us to rally 40 handles in, uh, you know, out of kind of nowhere. So, um, you know, somebody clicked on the buy button and, uh, it was off to the races. Um, I, uh, I, I think the rally itself today is interesting. 
you know, the, the, the Dow not really getting a big, huge boost. It's really all tech today. Uh, when I'm looking at it, equal weight S and P is up about 85 basis points. Uh, while the market cap, the big S and P is up 1.85 NASDAQ up almost 3%. Um, I'm, I'm interested that the financials are blowing up. You know, we're talking about NVIDIA at all time high JP Morgan. It is at an all time high as well today, Mark. Uh, so, uh, we've got the financials and we've got the, um, and we've got the, uh, the, the tech names. Now I actually wanted to pose a question to you guys. All right. This, you know, the old saying in commodity markets and in, you know, cash markets is the solution to high prices is high prices. Um, 75% margins will not last. Um, what I, I know AMD and Intel are trying to, are trying to get into the GPU business. I believe Apple is as well. Um, you know, when does that threat of competition come into play with a name like NVIDIA? Because right now, it's just straight euphoria in this thing. It is straight euphoria. I was listening to some analysis of that this morning, and they are saying this addressable market is so big that AMD could come into it and still not eat into NVIDIA's lunch, which sounds on the surface absurd, but just given how much people are, how much demand there is for this oh, stuff well, now. And, well, and the other thing is, is that th that demand needs to actually become profitable. Otherwise, that demand becomes vapid very quickly. Yeah, that's um, the other side of this that has yet to materialize. All the companies that are spending hard on this, like Alphabet and other, they need to see some returns sometime in the near future, right? Right, right. So that that's kind of the question is, you know, Intel came out yesterday, I believe, and said they're going to be getting, you know, they've already sold a bunch to Microsoft. Um, AMD is 100% getting into it. Uh, Qualcomm, I believe, is trying to play in the business. I know Apple is. Um so it's, uh, you know, when, when, when do you think this, I don't believe that the market is big enough to, that you can bring in four or five competitors and margins don't fall. I, 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 I just simply believe it's, a, that is absurd. The funny thing um, is this is about the third boom and not yet bust, but boom to bust cycle we've seen in NVIDIA just in the last, I would say, within the last half a well, decade had, or so. They yeah, had, I mean, you had the Bitcoin a, mining. That Bitcoin, Bitcoin even before really that, and NVIDIA, I remember, had a big run coming out of CES years ago when they said, hey, we've made this cool new mobile chip, and now mobile is going to be the big area. And they had a huge run off that. That fell apart. Then, of course, right after that, on the heels of that came the crypto boom, and you couldn't get your hands on any of their cards. Remember, the miners were just mm -hmm. bidding them out of any reach of anyone else. So that huge boom came. Then, of course, crypto winter came. The bus came. Obviously, we have yet to see the bus cycle on this. And at some point, you're right. These margins have to have to thin up. But yeah, this so, so far has outlived, I think, both of those other other cycles. And certainly from a value generation perspective has dwarfed them. So funny how we've this is now the third tilt of the windmill for this exact same stock. And yet now it's suddenly working with uh, NVIDIA, which, again, is fascinating. I do kind of wonder if, if we're hitting that point, that tipping point. My dad's arguing to me about how great NVIDIA is. The, it's the best thing on the planet. He doesn't. He doesn't watch graphics card makers. So is that the tipping point? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe we're reaching that level with the saturation of NVIDIA is so big. <laughs> but then we said that yesterday, maybe going into the announcement and it got there. All right, speaking of getting there, I do think he has finally overcome the internet issues that have been plaguing a lot of the Chicagoland area today. I do believe we are joined finally, better late than never, by the uncleist of Mike's, Mr. Uncle Mike Tussauds from St. Charles Wealth Manager. Uncle Mike, can you hear me? Are you there, sir? I am here. All right. Can you hear me? He lives. You sound pretty good, actually. Well, that's good. Yeah, it's funny. So I've had... Good internet all day. I mean, I heard about what happened in the Chicago area, but I've been fine all day. I've been trading. Nothing happened. But then I click on the Skype button, and uh, Grant, I would have been a little late anyway, but uh, the Skype issues made me a lot late. But nonetheless, here I am. Um, you know, in terms of what's happening today, just to everyone, the video is the big story, of course. Everybody knows that. Uh, over 14% on the day to day. Uh, the thing that's strangely that is kind of odd to me is that Apple is only up a buck 50 on the day. 
Um, Apple, to, it, Apple, it's like, if I'm not going to be the leader of this, then uh, I'm not going to be a part of it. And Apple's just like, it's not my day to day, so I'm not doing it. So that's what I think seems kind of interesting uh, based on everything that's going on in the tech world. Uh, same with Google. Google's only up 0.8% on the day, but uh, Amazon is up three over 3% on the day. Uh, so uh, Netflix is up over 2% on the day. So we are getting some movers in the tech world, uh, of course, uh, especially the fact that XLK is up over 3% on the day. But uh, Apple and Google uh, are not the big leaders of the day. And uh, that's... Uh, Something that's kind of interesting to me today as we are looking through this. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it in terms of what's happening today. It is NVIDIA. Uh, I don't think there's anything else that matters right now besides NVIDIA, NVIDIA, NVIDIA. Uh, that's clearly what's driving up the S&P so much. Uh, we're up almost 100 points on the day in the SPX. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see if other stocks get in line and want to follow NVIDIA on the way up, or this is the time to sell some covered calls or whatever the case may be. But um, that's pretty much it besides one thing, and that is never before in the history of the entire stock market has there ever been a better chance to sell or a better time to sell than today. We have all-time highs, folks. Doesn't mean it is a good time to sell, but I'm just saying there's never been a better time to sell. Uh, you missed it earlier on the show, Mr. Uncle Mike, but I was – talking about some uh, fun polls we have. And we have a fun one going right now for the question of the week, but we also did a flash poll that arose out of our conversation on Options Bootcamp yesterday where we were debating, my co-host there was suggested that NVIDIA right now, their earnings bigger than the next Fed announcement in terms of market impact. Where do you fall on that, Mr. Uncle Mike? You, you down with that or you perhaps disagree? Based on today, yes, it's not often. I, I don't think the next Fed announcement is going to give us 93 points of S&P movement. <laughs> yeah. You know, we were all saying, you know, when can we get this post-Fed market? Uh, who knew it was an NVIDIA market we were all waiting for instead? I mean, obviously, we've been talking about AI for a while, and NVIDIA is that trend, but still. Just fascinating stuff across the board. Let's see if things are fascinating uh, throughout the world of options, shall we, listeners? And the answer is kind of. Depends really where you're looking right now. Let's start in the land of VIX. And if you're expecting a crazy banger VIX day out there, listeners, then you might be, I don't know, a little bit disappointed because VIX is putting up some numbers and certainly compared to its ADV, it's looking decent. The ADV is 738. So that ADV has actually come in a little bit over the past week uh, since we chatted last on this program. I got a feeling that might change after these next couple of sessions, but we'll see. Uh, right now, looking decent, but nothing crazy. 454,000 contracts on the tape right now. A uh, SPY, though, taking the bit in its teeth, as you would expect. SPY, 6.12 million contracts. That is fully almost 2 million contracts more than we would expect. Usually, we expect SPY between 4.1 and about 4.3 this time of day. Maybe a busy day, 4.5. So, 6.12 million contracts. That is nothing to sneeze at out there in Spyland. The ADV also looking robust at eight point, that's about eight and a half million out there. Uh, the S also saying, hey, don't forget about me. The S, two and a quarter million contracts. That's about half a million more than we would expect this time of day as well. Uh, the ADV, 3.17 million out there. So they are not playing out there in S land. Small caps, we were just talking about them. Uh, trying to make up some of the ground that they gave up Earlier this week, uh, looking decent today, but not quite crazy robust. Not even to halfway of their ADV. 667 right now. Their ADV is about 1.43 million. So they got a little ways to go just to get to halfway to their ADV. And then you know what? Just uh, blowing the doors off out there today. They got the Qs already at almost 3 million, 2.94 million contracts. Usually you expect to see it right about 2.2 this time of day. So about three quarters of a million more contracts than we expect to see. The ADV 3.65, going to hit that today, obviously on the back of all this NVIDIA madness. Let's get out to single names and see if they are following suit. And the answer is yes. Listen, we're seeing some impressive levels in terms of what it takes to break into the top 10 again these days. This earnings cycle really setting a, a new bar for that. Uh, today, not quite there, but still very impressive. 370,000 contracts on the tape. That gets you to NVIDIA. No, I'm just joking. That's much higher up on our list. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Number 10 does get you to Silicon land, though. That's Intel. Our old friend's Intel. 42.97. Giving up half a buck out there today, or about 1.1%. So 
Yeah, not uh, not the boom day for Intel that perhaps you might have thought, given just the fact that it's just optimism for all things hardware, all things silicon, all things chip, all things AI. Intel not getting the job done there. Still good enough for 370,000 contracts. Now, if you want a name that is getting the job done, holy crap, Super Micro Computer Inc., a.k.a. SMCI. This one, I do believe, making its first foray into our top 10 here on the show <laughs> up 220 actually 222 handles just ticked right now or 30 and a quarter percent trading 956 20 right now my goodness i guess they like themselves a little bit of the nvidia earnings huh holy crap let's just see year to date it's up 30 percent today so i got a feeling it's got a banger just year to date and the answer is yes it's up 200 and 36%. It came into the year $285, almost a thousand right now, up 674 handles on the year. My goodness. So yeah, if you think NVIDIA is insane, and it clearly is, but <laughs> if you think that's insane, allow me to present to you SMCI for your trading pleasure. Uh, number eight, again, maybe kind of reflective of this new volume regime we're hanging out in. And again, Uncle Mike was talking about this earlier. Apple not really in the vanguard of the AI, so maybe that is starting to be reflected. Maybe we're in a new regime. I'll have to put this to the flow master, see what he thinks. But, uh, you know, we have talked before, Apple coming in at number 10 recently, never seen that before. Now, Apple coming in at number 8, 477,000 contracts. Apple up a buck and three quarters, or about 1%, trading 184, pretty much even right now, but not enough to really uh, move the needle out there from an options perspective. So yeah, maybe we are in this new paradigm where Apple is no longer the king of the roost, or even number two, but now hanging out uh, somewhere in the bottom half, if not at the absolute bottom of the top 10. Uh, number seven, it's Meta, 487, almost 488, up about 20 handles, about four and a quarter percent. Good for 478,000 contracts. And the number seven spot, a number six, it's our old friend Palantir. They were hurting earlier this week. They had given up about two and a half, maybe three bucks on all this kind of weakness heading into NVIDIA, all this concern, all this fear. People were thinking maybe we're getting a little bit ahead of our skis in the AI space. Palantir was feeling that. Now they're feeling uh, some burst of speed out there, courtesy of NVIDIA. Palantir up, up about nearly a buck, 93 cents trading about 23.70 or so right now. So a nice little day for them. And 480,000 contracts. And the number six spot. Number five, soon to be the newest addition to the Dow. This is the Amazonians. So trying this continued effort to make the Dow sexy. Dare I say it relevant to all of you out there. The Amazonians, 174.15, up about five and a half bucks or about 3.3%. So they're feeling the euphoria out there today as well. 537,000 contracts for them and the number five spot. Number four, you know, all this, all this NVIDIA talk kind of overshadowed everything else, including the fact that uh, Rivian getting taken to the woodshed. Rivian not having a banger evening at all. If you were hoping maybe this was the moment where the worm was going to turn out there in, in EV land, not last night, listeners. Rivian off four bucks or about almost 26%. Trading about 1140 right now. Good for 650,000 contracts. Weren't we just talking about, was it back in August? We were talking about, was it the Rivian August 25s people were loading up on? Man, how the, how the mighty have fallen. Yeah, 52-week high is 2806. I do believe that was around that time. But we had that poll we did because we had so much crazy paper going up. Rivians, there was one other name, and then it was the Keurig Dr. Pepper puts that ended up being a, the winner. Just crazy how Rivian has fallen out of bed. And good for 650,000 contracts. Number three, we were just talking about this name. Can they catch up to NVIDIA? Can they at least eat into some of that market share? It's AMD, 181.90, up about 17 and a half bucks or 10, almost 11% today. And again, they've kind of been accelerating of late. They had that big Me Too press conference not too long ago saying, hey, don't forget about us. <laughs> we do AI chips too. And ever since then, they've had quite the tear on their stock. Interestingly enough, given the news out of Rivian, what's going on with our number two name? Yes, I said number two. It's Tesla, 1.43 million. By the way, AMD, 1.14 million for number three listeners. Tesla, number two, uh, 1.43 million, up 260 today. So managing to buck the trend. Uh, they were coming for it earlier. They sold it off to about 191 and a third. It has rallied exactly six handles from there. So Tesla shaking off this Rivian news and managing to, I guess, participate in the general market euphoria that is 
We just have to call it NVIDIA Day from now. It's just a market holiday, NVIDIA Day. And then, do you need me to tell you what number one is, listeners? <laughs> you might be surprised. Maybe it's not as much paper as you think. It is NVIDIA, 1.96 million. You might be forgiven for expecting two, two and a quarter, two and a half, maybe even threatening three million contracts at this point. You know, the 1300 is going up 56,000 times. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason to any of this anymore. 774 and three quarters is where it's hanging out right now. Up exactly 100 handles. My goodness. Those 700s, I believe, going into the announcement yesterday were trading for around 21 and a half bucks with two days to go. So those ended up being, oh, a nice 50 handle winner. <laughs> Again, complete gambling, complete riverboat gambling, but that's what you're into. Uh, that one ended up working out. So yeah, NVIDIA, no surprise, taking the top spot out here. We have other earnings highlights from this week, but does it even matter? It's all NVIDIA all the time. I mean, what else? I mean, we got Moderna after the bell today, Intuit and Live Nation. Is that going to change anything? Friday, Warner Brothers Discovery. There's been some fun paper going up in there. Uh, check out Options Oddities if you want to see what we were talking about there. But yeah, all eyes, all dollars apparently are on NVIDIA right now as we keep rolling right on into the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. everybody welcome to the odd block the portion of the show where we get weird we get wild on thursdays we see what the flow master has up his sleeve before we get there really quickly mr flow master i want to put this question to you because it's something i've been mulling over for a while you know we've been doing the show for a while we've been crunching the top 10 for quite some time and for pretty much as long as we've been doing this show apple for a long time was the king it has fallen to number two in the last few years behind tesla but a solid number two most days, it's pretty easily there. Sometimes it gets kicked to three or four, maybe five if it's a crazy day. Uh, never before have we seen it at number 10. Yes, we did see it there. I believe it was last week. Now coming in at number eight, we're seeing all these outsized parabolic moves in these AI and chip-related names that seem, at least for the time being, to be leaving Apple a little bit in the dust. So I'm curious for you as someone who spends all day knee-deep in the flow. Do you think this is a bit of a paradigm shift? Are we going to start seeing Apple kicked down to the bottom half of the top 10? Or, dare I say it, out of the top 10 altogether, sir? Have you noticed this trend as well? Well, yeah, it's been a couple of years since Apple really led. And I, I do think, you know, it, I mean, it was such a, a behemoth, you know, on a consistent basis. And, and things really do seem to have quieted down, you know, in terms of the you know, the news cycle and the frenzy of activity, you know, their, their virtual headset was at five grand kind of sounded like a little bit of a flop. And, and it's, I mean, right now it is really all about, you know, AI and obviously, you know, that's what we're seeing out there. I think uh, SMCI, I mean, that's a crazy meme name we've seen. I believe the story, the backstory is NVIDIA actually owns a little piece of it. Not at all <laughs> that would make any sense in terms of pricing justification, but uh, just the fact that NVIDIA does have an investment in it, I think, is, is kind of why uh, it gets somewhat crazy. But, yeah, I don't um, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not an Apple owner. I have friends who are, you know, lifelong loyal uh, investors and customers. And I just kind of feel like, uh, you know, there, there's nothing super duper exciting, right? They come out with their $1,000 phones every year and people buy them. But... Uh, just not, you know, the excitement is concentrated in, in the AI world, you know, and I, and it's probably going to stay that way for a while. Does seem like the options volume is backing that up. Let's see what options volume is catching the eye of the flow master today. First, let's go out to the land of DraftKings. We were just talking about this on the show. Might've been on oddities uh, even last week. This one hasn't been on our radar in a while. Now, all of a sudden back with a vengeance uh, draft kings you know it maybe you love it trickers ticker symbol easy for me to say ticker symbol dkng trading 40 and three quarters kind of unch today so not experiencing the nvidia euphoria so i guess maybe the ai boom does have its limits not carrying over to draft kings on the year though you know what this beast has been up to this one is uh, pretty impressive it was 19 and a half dollars a year ago 
40 and three quarters today. So that's up 108, almost 109 percent, about 21 and a quarter handles on the year, listeners. So this thing has been pretty much straight up for the entirety of the last year. It topped out, looks like recently at about 45 and two thirds. So it has sold off a little bit over the last couple of weeks. But outside of that, you really, you can't argue with this stock if you've been a holder. A Mr. Flowmaster, sir, what caught your eye out there in DraftKings options today? So, yeah, this is, I'm actually, a, I, I'm not really a big sports fan, but I opened up a DraftKings account once it became legal in New York because I really, I'm really interested in how they, uh, you know, kind of gamify and, and, you know, obviously the, the gambling industry is, is all about stimulation and, and innovative ways to use data. And so um, I've played around just because it blows my mind sometimes the, uh, you know, the, the, the ability to, to bet intra game and do all sorts of kind of wild things. And then how they're able to manage the, how the system's able to manage the odds uh, continuously is very, very similar to a market maker. I mean, it's, it's kind of the same business, right? Um, so with this trade, actually at first it was, it looked like a call buyer. It looked like one of these, uh, you know, kind of the, I guess the classic for us, right? We look for a, a unusually large, aggressive opening call buyer, and we say, ooh, that's bullish. And in this case, what the trade was, was 5,800 of the April 44 calls uh, traded uh, when the stock was at 40.53 uh, this morning. And they traded at buck 51 on a quote that was 136 at 151. Looks like a buyer. Compared to the SIBO CEO value, which we put on trades in Trade Alert and Live Vol, uh, it was the CEO was buck forty six, so it looks like it was, uh, you know, one of these simple call buyers that's a nickel over theoretical value. But actually, it wasn't because when when you dig into this, we talk about this open close data set that we have. All the, a bunch of exchanges have it. We all call it the same thing, and it breaks out the activity by customers buying to open and buying to close and selling to open and selling to close. And it's in 10 minute intervals. Not, it's not trade by trade, but when you see a big trade, uh, you can basically kind of back into the dynamics of it, especially if it's in something that's a little bit blocky like this. So when I actually dug into the, the details on these April 44 calls, uh, they traded on SIBO. So it means we kind of have the, we have the data set that shows if that was customer buying or selling. And it actually was a customer selling uh, 5,900 total and the firm bought 5,822. So, and this is an opening trade. There wasn't enough open interest for it not to be. Open interest is only 400 contracts or less. So, uh, you know, I looked at stock price. They did have earnings last week and the stock was almost flat on earnings. And this actually looks to me like somebody, you know, stock has doubled in a year. So it, it has been a great run, but it almost looks to me like somebody's like, okay, I don't really, I'm an owner, but I don't really feel like it's going to get much beyond here. And they just wanted to you know, take some of that premium, even though it's a lot lower post earnings. Uh, and so it's actually kind of a, you know, a call seller if they have the stock is still bullish because it means they're not looking for the stock to crater. Um, but, um, you know, kind of a moderately bullish one. But I just like it because it's an example of one that you really have to look underneath the uh, into the data to, to make sure you get it right. In this case, it's a call seller in drafting. I like that. Yeah, you're right. Because sometimes you got to dig through the weeds. Always nice and handy to have a firm willing to step up and pay the offer for you. That's that's a nice thing. That shows you're a good customer. Mm -hmm. A customer in good stand. I don't think you and I could get that, Phil, Mr. Flowmaster. But uh, someone was able to sell a buck 51 kind. Mr. Meatball, sir, you think you could sell buck 51 Drack King April 44s or should we look elsewhere? You know, I saw those and I thought they were kind of interesting. That was not me selling them. Um, but I, I did see those. And, uh, you know, DraftKings, a little bit of post Super Bowl, a little post uh, earnings malaise. Uh, you know, it's been as high as 40, almost 46 bucks recently. So, you know, an interesting play uh, trying to, you know, betting that it'll pop back over the 21 day moving average. But yeah, no, I'm not selling those. And Mr. Flowmaster, I'm with you. I, I like playing around with DraftKings during mid-game just to see how their systems update. Because you're right, it is very much like an order book they have out there. They have to maintain the odds and move them with every oh, they, play and they, every down. Mark, they, they literally have market makers. Yes. That's what they do. Yeah, exactly. It's electronic market making. It just is in gambling markets. I it's, mean, it's, it's what pretty, the casinos do. It's pretty fascinating to um, watch that. You know. So, yeah, I mean, they basically run a, 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 you know, a gambling business or a, uh, a market making business. Almost the entirety of all my uh, sports wagering that I do is usually intra-game just because of that. 
So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty fascinating stuff. We'll have to have a whole new show on the network. Uh, just and they have some cool products and they have things that approximate the products we know and love. So they have some quote unquote futures and a few other things there. So the industry is starting to grow up. I would love to have you know options on these games and everything else. We're not quite there yet, listeners, but maybe someday we shall see. As we keep on rolling into another name, I was just talking about them at the top of the show and not in a good way. This is AT&T, big outage out here in Chicagoland area today. Maybe other areas too, I don't know. I just know the local area here. Uh, 16 and about 1660 or so, up about 30 odd cents, or I should say off about 30 odd cents on the day, about two and a quarter percent. Looks like probably a lot of this uh, driven by the, the news out there today. On the year, we talked about AT&T a little bit in the past year. Not exactly the sexiest of names. That's reflected in the stock. It was 1938 a year ago, so they're off about two and three quarters dollars on the year. Uh, they peaked, looks like, around April of last year at almost exactly 20 bucks, 1999. They couldn't quite break the 20 threshold. Then they gave up the ghost all the way down in July. They got down to 1343. And they spent the rest of the year fighting this way back up. February 1st hit 1804. Then I think this uh, this past news not exactly welcome, driving them back down to 1662, where we're hanging out right now. Mr. Flowmaster, sir, what caught your eye out there in the land of AT&T, or as the old timers on SIBO used to say, telephone. Telephone. That was one of the places I spent some time on the floor when I was brand new, and I learned some interesting things about how markets <laughs> really work, especially back in the olden days. Um before I get into it, I want to say one thing that I was talking to a broker at Citibank one time, this is years ago, and we were talking about a trade and, and he actually pointed out that they intentionally sometimes would put a customer who's a buyer up on the bid because, and, and this guy actually had used to work at, at a market maker shop. So I'm like, well, how could you possibly do that? That's like selling below value. That's, that's against everything you know we learn. And he said, listen, it makes the customer very, very happy. And he said, if we put it up on the offer and then there's a whole bunch of kind of pile on buyers of this contract, or if it calls, people might you know run into the stock. He's like, it's going to run away from us. He said, so in a way it was kind of done intentionally to cloud the data, um, which I was kind of like, you know, nuts that screws up my whole approach, but it is one of the reasons that, you know, you, there's a little game theory at work here, right? You have to think about like, Oh, if everybody sees a whole bunch of calls on the offer, they're going to go buy those calls. Some people will, maybe they'll even run the stock up. And, um, when you're a bank putting that trade up and maybe positioning it, he said, listen, I, it, theoretical value doesn't matter if stock's going to move on you. And on top of that, he's like, we just want to be, you know, we want the customer to be happy and we're perfectly happy to be clean on the trade. Meaning, you know, they basically buy it from all the, the people that are piling on selling additional. So that was interesting. Um, telephone. So um, this is actually not really anything in terms of um, specific trades, but it's an overall you know condition. And since we were telling or talking about it, and there were some headlines this morning about widespread outages, not just in AT and T. Some of some of the other cell cell providers had issues. But so the the put call in there is we got over 100,000 puts have traded today versus 70,000 calls. That put volume is six times normal for telephone. Um, the call volume is only 27% above normal. It's pretty spread out. Uh, it's um, it's a lot of it is is contracts that could expire tomorrow. So the 16 and a half puts that expire tomorrow, 25,000 those have traded. And the 16 puts as well, about 16,000 those. It looks like it's all buyers. Volatility, uh, there's some longer dated stuff. So March 1st and March 8th are also in the most active. Um, the volatility is higher across the board in there, uh, like up, up about two points in the near near couple of expirations. And I actually think this might be an opportunity um, to, to kind of it, – it, people reacting to kind of a one-off is is usually a bad trade for those people. They see a headline and then they go, "Oh, I'm going to go buy some puts because I heard tell you know AT and T services are having problems." Um, you know, this stock it it pays a pretty solid dividend. I think with the stock here, which is 1660, it pays about um, a, almost a 6.7 percent div yield. I don't think there's any uh, kind of current risk to that. And um, you know, so if put buyers are out there. I actually am looking at possibly. Uh, selling something, you know, or maybe even doing kind of a wheel strategy, selling some puts and the stock pops, you know, or rebounds a little bit, I'll be happy. And if it goes down a little lower, I'll take the stock and, and, and hope that there's no issue with the dividend yield continuing. Interesting stuff. Mr. Meatball, same question for you, sir. What do you think about these, uh, these perhaps incident driven AT&T puts? 
Yeah, I mean, at and is not having a great day today, are they? Uh, it is not looking great for them. Uh, I, I saw Verizon trolling them on, on Twitter, which was pretty funny. Uh, I'm actually, frankly, surprised it's only down 2%. Um, you know, it was down a little bit more, but, uh, uh, you know, it is very hard to get people to switch cell phone companies, but something like this can can do it. Uh, it might be worth the... You know, I, I rather than buying AT and T puts, I might take a hard look at some Verizon calls because it's actually down 1.6 percent today. Um, or you could look at uh, team. You know, maybe they're more of a T-Mobile person, so you could look at uh, uh, Teamus. That uh, you know that that is uh, down a little bit too. So there's there's maybe a trade a trade in there. Speaking of trades that are in there, Mr. Fleet Meatball, anything catching your eye today you want to talk about here on the Odd Block? Uh, you know, you mentioned Palantir. There's a just a massive amount of volume there. Um, I was actually kind of struck how much volume was in Palantir and the ratio going up. Um, calls are outpacing puts over four to one today, uh, which is pretty bananas. Um, and then uh, I saw I saw this A lit trade. Um, that w- w- uh, I was, I was actually going to ask Henry, was this the, the a lit, the 20,000 a lit, uh, nine calls and nine puts for may was that it, it, I wasn't sure if it was a conversion or if it was a straddle, uh, cause it, it they both went up on the bid, um, and, uh, 20,000 of those went up and I wanted to ask, uh, the flow master if, uh, cause I didn't see any stock and it would, uh, but, uh, I want to know if that was a. Uh, a conversion or if that was a, a straddle sell. I, I'm going to find out for you. I see it. I don't May see it. May 24. It does look like a, um, it looks like a straddle sale. I have a friend on the Arca floor who I will yeah. check in yeah. with. There you go. Mr. That one, May 20, May. How about Mark, you know, take a look at the chart of Alit. Do you want to yeah. sell the we'll nine at straddle right at a buck 20 uh, <laughs> all the way out to May? So you got uh, three months to collect the dollar twenty on Alit, you 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 a seller of that? That doesn't seem that sexy when they were trading six and a half bucks just uh, a couple of months ago. Trading about nine bucks right now. Are they giving up? About it was like twelve two days ago, right? Uh, let's see. Let's go back on the. Mo- oh yeah, you're right. It was about looks like about nine and a half bucks. Just just yeah, this last week. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah, I, I'm not. A, I'm. I don't think I'm loving that either way. You're right. You know me. I don't like going out that far with my premium sales anyway. Let alone for just a dollar. Uh, yeah, this one, but this, Alight Inc. listeners, this is not a name we have talked about here before. They're out of Illinois, whatever they are alighting on. <laughs> we'll have to dig in. They have a, an activist hedge fund going on against them as well, so maybe they have some of this uh, activist investing. We'll have to dig into this one a little bit, listeners, as we keep on rolling and go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, listeners, you like that straddle? If it is a straddle, you like that, listeners out there in the light, hit us up, let us know as we keep on rolling. Speaking of letting us know, you folks had no shortage of opportunities to do just that. Last week, we asked you, hey, Tesla and Apple, both trading around 188. I wonder how that trade is working out right now. Spoiler alert, Tesla winning that one. But uh, uh, they're both trading 188. So we thought, gun to your head, which one would you rather buy? To make it fun, we also added a couple extra. We said, I'll stick with crypto or I'll stick with VIX. And at the end of the day, 38.5% of you went the Apple route. After one week, that's not a winner. But of course, this is not a one week. We didn't give you a time frame on this. So imply a little bit longer duration than one week. But still, near day did not looking so great. Tesla right behind it, number two, 29.5%. They had a nice little pop, almost up to 200. So looking a little bit better there. I'll stick with Vol. So a lot of you out there just slinging the Contango trade. A little bit rough of late, but uh, get maybe getting back on the horse out there today. Or maybe just going short. Or maybe you're going long, Vix, in which case... Hopefully you hit some bids this morning, <laughs> 20.5% for you folks. And then 11.5% bringing up the rear with crypto, even though that's been a pretty good trade out there of late as well. Even the Flowmaster, before show, he's out there checking Solana quotes. So everybody's caught up in all the madness out there. Uh, we also asked you again, start started the show, 70% of you saying NVIDIA earnings bigger than a Fed announcement. But our actual question of the week right now is along these lines. I think we kind of know the answer to this, but (laughs) we asked you quite simply, everyone is laser focused on NVIDIA earnings this week, but how important is this announcement really 
to the market and to your portfolio. Uh, very, NVIDIA leads the market, or about as much as other earnings, or not much, it's overhyped. And uh, you folks were down with this one from the beginning. You were all over NVIDIA. And again, it's hard to argue that you were not correct. Right now, 62.7% of you saying, yes, it's very important. NVIDIA leads the market. And it was that way heading into the announcement as well. So it's not like this is all recency biased. 20.3% uh, saying not much. It's overhyped. Uh, kind of hard to make that argument in light of everything we're seeing out there right now. And 16.9% saying about as much as other earnings. Uh, Mr. Uncle Mike, we'll start with you, sir. Are you surprised that our audience pretty much agreeing with what you said at the start of the show, that it's all about NVIDIA, NVIDIA, NVIDIA right now, saying NVIDIA leads the market. And now that NVIDIA is in the rearview mirror, at least for now, sir, what else are you keeping an eye on until the Monday show? Well, I mean, it's kind of tough seeing as 99% of all my client holdings were in NVIDIA uh, today. I mean, that's just kind of how I roll. I knew it. I knew it. Ha -ha. Finally, the real Uncle Mike shows his colors. Nah, I'm just kidding. It was all in NVIDIA out of the money calls going into today. So, um, oh. you know, we, we were only able to quadruple our money today. So it's kind of a slow day for the typical um, St. Charles Wealth. Man. No, just kidding. That's course. you buying but, the 1300 uh, expiring tomorrow. That was you. Ah, uh, no comment. <laughs> no, I, I have very minimal. I'm not much of a. We have, we have some Nvidia, but not a ton of it. But um, anyway, yeah, going into the weekend uh, with Nvidia in the rearview mirror, uh, I think we need to see how the market reacts to this. I think tomorrow is going to be a key day in that. Yes, today we have a, an S and P up uh, nearly a hundred points. Uh, but uh, is this something with which we can sustain? Uh, are we going to have a pullback tomorrow? We have the S&P moving upward two points, uh, or I'm sorry, 2%. Uh, you need to just kind of kind of prepare for a little bit of a pullback. And um, if you're wrong and the market continues to go up, it's not exactly a bad thing because you're still making money, but uh, it might not be a bad idea to take a couple deltas off the table right now. And Mr. Meatball, same question for you, sir. What are you keeping an eye on until the Monday episode? Well, I want to see what the NVIDIA fall through looks like. Um, SMCI looks like it's in the middle of another squeeze. I want to see how that plays out. And again, JP Morgan, all time high. I'm, I'm watching these financials. Um, and uh, yeah, but so those are, uh, and I want to see if Rivian is the next Pontiac. Uh, <laughs> it's down four bucks today, 26%. Uh, you know, mm. I, I'm, I'm interested in how this, this EV deal plays out. I wonder how all those AUG 25 buyers are faring now if they've uh, turned to the dark side. They kept buying all this time. And uh, last but not least, Mr. Flowmaster, sir, what are you keeping an eye on until your next appearance next Thursday, sir? Uh, so, you know, when we're getting out of earnings season, uh, which is which is nice. I, I agree that it's um, – I think we should – I think everybody should take a breath and try to figure out – uh, if, if we're getting a little too frothy here, I actually put a post on LinkedIn uh, yesterday counting up the number of inverted skew single stock name, uh, conditions uh, going back to 2019. And, you know, inverted skew is, is where the calls are bid more than the puts, you know, so it, it really implies an expectation of, of higher upside probability. It's pretty speculative. And in, during the, the, the height of meme stock 2021, uh, for a while, we had like hundreds, actually 700 stocks or almost 18% of the single stock world was positively skewed for a while. And currently, we have about 200. Um, actually, to, after today, it might be a little bit higher. But um, that's about five, four and a half percent of the single stock names have this positive upside skew. Now, when you get days like today where, where things really do move up, that actually makes a lot of sense. But in general, it starts to make me nervous when we really just see a lot of basically pricing of option skew that is, is kind of showing that the that people are actually putting money out there. You know, it's really only going to work out if, if things continue higher. And that to me, I kind of want to be the side of that. I mean, it actually, if you're still bullish, you, it makes call spreads nice and cheap, right? Cause you're selling an upside call for some pretty juicy ball. Um, you know, so um, I, I agree with Mike, maybe time to, Take a breather, you know, consider overriding some of the stocks if you've, if you've been long and, and you've made some money. Uh, just kind of trim your delta a little. Yeah, it's something we were talking about just yesterday uh, on boot camp going into the big announcement. We were talking about that, that exact topic and about some of Mandy's research on the 
on the single name skews and just how how juicy things are looking and maybe that is perhaps you're right maybe that is the the canary in the coal mine that we are getting a little bit frothy a little bit effervescent uh, to the upside so yes uh, maybe maybe a good time to keep some keep some of your powder dry for the next big move out there listeners uh, that music means we are coming to the end of this big move which is all things nvidia but don't worry if you want a little bit more of our content and you also maybe want a little bit more of uncle mike you didn't get enough of him today on this show because of course he was uh, fashionably late you say man i could use a whole episode with just uncle mike well guess what He's coming up with me in a little bit, about half an hour, if he can get all of his technology sorted out on a little bit of this week in Futures Options. Uh, before you go off to get your stuff fixed, Mr. Uncle Mike, where should folks go if they want to check out all of your Uncle Mike goodness in one place? Follow me on Twitter, at Mike Tusa, and then check out my website, stcharleswealth.com. Set up an appointment. I love talking to our listeners. It's always a joy. And stay tuned for this week in Futures Options. How about that? There we go. Uncle Mike, obviously very excited. I'm excited. Are you excited as well, Lil? I guess we'll find out in a little bit. And Mr. Meatball, same question for you, sir. Where should folks go if they want to dive deep into all of the pit goodness? Yeah, head over to optionpit.com. We're a little excited to uh, – we're putting out great content every day, talking, uh, talking training. So uh, come and check us out. Optionpit.com. Dot com. The place to go. Don't go to dot net. Huckster's lurking over there. Only dot com. The place to go. And last but certainly not least, from Sibo East, Mr. Flowmaster, sir, if you can tear yourself away from your Solana quote tron there, where should folks go if they want they want more Sibo goodness in their life? Sibo.com uh, slash RMA, which stands for Risk and Market Analytics. And we will be happy to set you up with a trial, show you some of the magic. Uh, walk you through some of the some of the shortcuts for odd blocks and all sorts of interesting things. No, they can't have that shortcut. That's just for us. That's that is exclusive to us. You can have all the other goodies except for that one, listeners. Uh, we we claim pride of place of that. Sibo.com slash RMA, the place to go to kick the tires and light the fires. I will be chatting with your buddy, Miss Kathy Clay, coming up at the FIA Boca conference coming up now in a couple of weeks now. So FIA Boca moving up on us fast and furious. Got to head down to Florida for that. So stay tuned for that on the network and a whole bunch of fun. Stay tuned for Twifo in a little bit. And, of course, coming up tomorrow, back again for a little bit of the old volatility views. Should be a fun time. Who's joining us in the hot seat? Got to tune in to find out. After that, exclusively for you pro folks, a little bit of the old options oddities will we have some fun trades to talk about yeah i think we will then back again on monday another episode of the option block stay safe out there everybody the option block is brought to you by SIBO. when it comes to trading volatility trust SIBO, the creator of the vix index for in-depth and relevant information SIBO's tools and services gives you up-to-date trade insights analysis and positions of vix options and futures no matter what kind of trader you are there's plenty of useful information to take the guesswork out of creating your portfolio strategy and to help you make more educated moves in the market visit www.cboe.com com slash vix today to learn more you're listening to the options insider radio network the home of the options podcast for more quality options programs visit the options or search for options insider radio network in your podcast provider of choice listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the itunes and google play stores Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com. <laughs>